So it's been a little while since I've done any kind of gear review or demo here on this channel. And there's several reasons for that. But today I'm going to change it up and talk about one of my favorite pedals of 2019 so far. I almost said 2018, but it's not 2018 anymore. It's 2019. Now, right before NAM this year, Strymon announced their big new pedal for this year, the Volante. And I was really, really excited to check it out. I played it at NAM and kind of freaked out a little bit. Now, before we go any further, Strymon's not paying for this video. They're not sponsoring it in any way other than providing me the Volante for free. So keep that in mind as you're listening to me talk about this pedal. God, that light is kind of bright. Now, if you're new to the channel, you might not know that I've been a Strymon fan and user for years. I've owned a Timeline for going on six years now. I've owned a Big Sky for a while. I own a Mobius as well. I really like what Strymon does, but this isn't five years ago. When the timeline first came out, it's only real competition was the Eventide Time Factor or maybe the DL4 from Line 6. But even at that time, the Line 6 was a little long in the tooth. But in 2019, that is no longer the case. Strymon is facing serious competition in the delay and reverb and modulation market from a whole host of different companies like Source Audio and even tied with the H9 and GFI with the Specular Tempest, which is combining reverb and delay into a really cool, small, unique layout and package. So it begs the question, is it worth buying something like the Volante today when you have so many other options available to you. But before we get into that, I think we need to hear the pedal by itself. Now, in the track at the beginning of the video, I was playing the Strymon through my Kemper, and I was doing that so that I could utilize the stereo effects loop in the Kemper. I was using all of my own profiles. They were all from the Lightning 15 pack, which you can find linked below if you're a Kemper user and you want to check that out. And I'm going to use that same setup for the sound examples today. So what you're going to hear is the Volante going through the stereo effects loop of the Kemper. No added EQ, no added post-processing, just the Volante and the Kemper together. Thank you. 
just heard some of my favorite settings on the Volante that I've come up with since I've had it. And we're just gonna talk briefly about some of the features if you're not familiar with this pedal. So there's three different delay types on here, drum, tape, and studio. The drum setting is basically their take on a Benson Echo Rec, which was a spinning platter, spinning wire. It was kind of a unique design and how it worked. Probably the most famous use of a Benson Echo Rec is the drum sound on When the Levee Breaks. And before you start to leave comments, yes, that was a Benson Echo Rec used on the drum sound. It was not the sound of the room. That echo sound was not slapped back from the foyer at Headley Grange. Don't start with those comments. <laughs> the next setting is a tape setting, and that's going to be pretty much like an Echoplex, a pretty standard tape delay sound. And this thing kills the Echoplex sound. In my time with it so far, that's been my favorite setting to use. I definitely spend the most time on the tape setting. And then the last delay type is a studio delay. And that would be kind of more pristine sounding delay if you were using like an actual reel to reel tape deck, much like the one behind me here or a two inch 24 track studio machine. So the repeats on that are cleaner. They're more pristine. They're more hi-fi than the drum or the tape setting. Next, we move on to the buttons here. Now, this is probably my favorite part about the Volante, and this is how you actually control it, how you dial in the delay repeats and the feedback. And by pressing different combinations of buttons, you can get some really unique delay sounds, stuff that would be much harder to get on a traditional delay pedal. Then we have all of our controls here for your normal delay settings. You can control the wear, how much wear is on the tape and the mechanics. This introduces a lot of modulation and crackle and vibe. I love the mechanics control. And another incredibly cool feature on the Volante is the spring reverb. This thing has a built-in spring reverb, which you can blend in with your delay repeats to add some extra ambience to them. Now, one of the things I really dig about this pedal is the fact that there's no menus. There's no screen on here. There's nothing to dig through. Everything, every control you need is mounted on top of the pedal. It's easily accessible. You can reach down in an instant while you're playing and start tweaking parameters and dialing in your sound. So now let's talk about some of the cons with the Volante. It's not all perfect. There are some downsides with this pedal that I've found. First of all, the presets. You really only have access to eight presets at a time easily, unless you're using Strymon's proprietary favorite switch or some kind of MIDI switcher like the Boss ES5 or ES8. If you're utilizing the MIDI, you do have access to a lot more presets, but without a screen, it's hard to tell what preset you're using or what you're selecting. You kind of have to keep track of that stuff. Another downside is the size. This pedal is basically exactly the same size as its bigger brother, the Timeline. Now the Timeline is a little bit taller, but they're essentially the same size. They're gonna take up the same amount of space on your pedal board which might not be a bad thing, but you're definitely getting more functionality and more sounds for the space taken up on your board with the timeline than you are with the Volante. The Volante is just a tape echo. Whereas the timeline does the tape delay thing, but it also does bucket brigade and reverse and swell and ice and digital, all different types of sounds that you just can't get out of the Volante. And you know what, that kind of gets back to the core of this pedal. The Volante is almost like a one trick pony. It's a tape delay through and through. Now it does the tape delay thing, I think better than just about any other tape delay style pedal out there. But at the end of the day, you're spending 400 bucks street price and taking up a fair chunk of your pedal board for one type of delay. So is it worth it? In my opinion, it definitely is worth it. See, when I'm using my timeline, 90% of the time, I'm using the tape delay setting. I love that sound. I love the modulation that it adds to your signal, the chorusing effect, it really fattens up your sound. Even on something like the Nemesis from Source Audio, which is an incredible delay pedal, I basically only use the analog, the tape, and the noisy tape setting. That's just me. I've never really found a use for the shifter sound or the helix sound. Occasionally I'll use something like the reverse, but for me, I live in those three sounds. So having the added functionality and the different flavors of tape and this unique tape head selector layout, like something you would get on an Echo Rec is really, really cool. 
Plus you have the spring reverb in there, which if you're not a huge reverb type person, this could eliminate a reverb pedal on your board. And the other thing too is in the Strymon line, this kind of sits happily between their smaller pedals like the El Capistan or the Deco and their flagship pedals like the Timeline. I think they purposely designed this pedal to fit in between those two spaces. You have more functionality, more horsepower, more sounds available on tap than something like the El Capistan or the Deco but you don't have all of the features and all the functionality of something like the timeline. And I think that's perfect because like I said, I'm really underutilizing something like the timeline personally. It's nice to have the option to do the trim delay or the filter delay, but very, very rarely do I personally ever use that setting. But I could swap the Volante out for the timeline on my board and probably never miss it. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on the Strymon Volante. What do you think about this pedal? Is this something that you're interested in? Are you going to pick one up? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, do you want to see more of this type of video on the channel? If you do, let me know by leaving a comment in the section down below as well. If you want to download the original track at the beginning of the video, check out The Green Room. It's where you can sign up to directly support the channel. You can download my original music there as well as sign up for one-on-one -on -one Skype sessions with me each month. That's linked in the description box down below. And again, for all you Kemper users out there, you can check out my profiles there as well. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Rhett Scholl. Thanks for watching and I will catch you on the next one.